I'd like to show you how the skills that you develop with Power Query can translate across different Microsoft products. Here we have Microsoft Excel 2016. I have Power BI Desktop and I have Visual Studio 2017 with SQL Server Data Tools add-in installed. Uh, Power Query is now part of all of these products. So I'm going to start with Excel and I'm going to choose Get Data off the Data Ribbon and I'm going to choose from file and then I'm going to choose from folder. And this is going to use a, uh, a part of an exercise from my Power BI mastering course. I'm going to navigate down to where I have the fact table data for the airline performance data here in the 2016 folder. I have 12 files. We're going to treat this folder as a data source. Here you can see the 12 CSV files. I'm going to and combine and edit and then you'll see that Power Query will open and I can use the first file to get the schema or metadata information for all 12 of the data files. So this opens the query editor. Here you can see that uh, I can just remove the first column and I'm going to go ahead and, and rename this to airline performance. You can see that several objects were created in the queries pane on the left side automatically, and then several transformation steps were created, as you can see in the applied steps list. So I'm going to switch over to the advanced editor and go ahead and just copy the generated script so that we can save some time when I transition to another tool. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, minimize Excel. And now I'm going to switch over to Power BI Desktop. This is where I'm going to do the bulk of the work. But as you can see, we've started in Excel and we've generated part of the um, query that will be used to import all of my airline performance data. So here in Power BI Desktop, essentially I'm going through the same process. You can see that the user experience is slightly different very intuitive. I'm going to navigate to the same folder as before there to the Mastering Power BI workshop class to the fact data 2016 folder and I'll click OK and th this brings me to the same dialogue as before where I'll combine and edit and this will open the query editor and generate the same data mashup script code uh, as we did in Excel. So Switching to the Power Query Query Editor window here in Power BI Desktop, I'm actually going to open the Advanced Editor and I'm going to replace the script that was generated in this window with the script that I had copied from the Excel Query Editor. So I'm going to go and paste that. You can see that the query runs just fine. So the code is transportable. I'll rename that query to airline performance just like I did before in Excel. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, speed up the recording at this point. I, I actually recorded this bit just a few moments ago. Typically in Power Query at this point, and this is a, a fairly wide table, I would go through each and every column, renaming the columns, making sure that my uh, tables, my columns or fields all have friendly names, typically with mixed upper and lower case. So any of the columns that I want to expose through the data model, I want to make sure that they're user friendly. So I'm just going to go through each of the columns one at a time. Uh, as I'm playing the recording uh, at uh, faster speed, you can see that I'm kind of zipping through that. And I'm going to make sure that all of my columns have friendly names. Now this will generate quite a bit of uh, data mashup script or M script uh, that we'll be able to see in the advanced editor as soon as I'm through with these actions. Now that I've renamed all of my columns, I'll go ahead and just choose the columns that I want to uh, leave. So I'll use the choose columns dialog and uh, deselect a number of columns that I don't need. Also a very common practice. And the next thing that I'm going to do is hold down control and group select uh, all of the columns that uh, defaulted to a decimal data type. Um, these should all be whole number data types. So I'm just going to choose those columns, again, playing the recording fast, so 
Uh, just in the interest of time, I'm going to convert those to a whole number. And those are all of the changes that I wanted to make in the query. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the generated script in the advanced editor. So you can see that a number of additional actions were created. I'll copy that to the clipboard. And now I'm going to minimize uh, the uh, Power BI desktop query and switch over to Visual Studio. So here in Visual Studio, either 2015 or 2017, I can create a new project targeting an Analysis Services Tabular 2017 instance. I'll go ahead and call my project Airline Performance. That will create uh, a solution and project folder and then a workspace database here, just taking the defaults uh, on my local machine. So here in Visual Studio, I've created a new Analysis Services Tabular 2017 project. And I'm going to go to the Tabular Model Explorer and create a new data source. Now this is the new method of managing data sources and importing tables. And you can see the Get Data experience is exactly as it was in Power BI Desktop. So I'll go ahead and browse to the same uh, folder full of files that I did before. There to my mastering uh, Power BI uh, workshop, fact table 2016 folder that has the 12 CSV files in it. And uh, this is a little bit different. I choose an impersonation mode, which essentially is the credentials used uh, to be able to read files from the file system. I'll go ahead and enter my name there. So here in the Analysis Services Project in SSDT, I manage connections separately from queries. So I've defined my connection. Now I right click on the connection and choose Import New Tables. And so from that connection, I can import a table which takes me to the query editor, which is just about the same as it was before in Excel and Power BI Desktop. I'll go ahead and rename the query to Airline Performance. One minor difference here is that I import one table at a time, so I'll only deal with one, one data source or one um, table in the query editor rather than managing all of them on the left side. But you'll see that as I go through the same steps to import those 12 files from a folder, that it generates all of the dependent queries and functions over on the left side. I rename my query over on the right side going to go ahead and remove that first column just like we did before, which generates mscript. And uh, you can see that I, I have the same general user interface. And uh, here are queries that were generated over on the left side. I'm going to go ahead and open up the advanced editor. You'll see that there is one thing that is, um, that is not quite as consistent. As I paste this script, you'll see that this throws an error because it did generate a different function, you just using a different function name. So my script is entirely compatible, it's just that it created a different function name. And so I just need to copy that function, transform file from air, airline performance. And then in the advanced editor, you can see that earlier the function name was transform file from 2016. And so I just need to replace each instance of the um, previous function name with the new function name. It's actually easier to copy all this code, paste it into something like Notepad or Notepad++, do a search and replace, and then um, it'll just work as it does here. So as you can see, uh, everything has been renamed, the data types are right, the query runs, and now I click the import button on the left side of the query editor here, and that will begin importing all of the data. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to switch back to Power BI Desktop, and I'll perform the, um, the same import there while um, this is populating since it's going to take a few minutes to get data out of all of those files. So we'll switch back to Power BI Desktop. And in the query editor on the home ribbon, we choose uh, apply or close and apply. There you can see the, the dialog that uh, tells us which file it's importing from. And we can watch that progress 
we could do the same thing in, in Excel since we have these queries in all three of these tools now. Um, uh, Excel uh, by default wants to populate a, 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 a worksheet um, table with this data. I, I hadn't uh, deselected that option. So uh, Excel gives me an additional warning that, that tells me that it may, may fill a worksheet with a lot of data if I don't deselect that, that tick box. But here you can see back in uh, the SSDT, we're, we're going to import about uh, five and a half million rows. So you see the progress there. We're about two thirds of the way there. Let's switch back to Power BI Desktop and see how that's going. So we're on uh, file seven of 12. So we're about halfway through. And uh, so we're actually importing these, these files three different times. So there's, uh, there's our completed import in um, Visual Studio for our Analysis Services Tabular project. There you can see the final row count in the table that was imported in the tabular model. And then if I switch back to Power BI Desktop, there you can see the table in our Power BI Desktop model with the final row count. As you can see, my Power Query skills are transferable to Excel for desktop analysis, to Power BI, and to Analysis Services Tabular.